Hello, chart watchers and Decision Point faithful. Welcome to this Thursday morning, June 25th, Decision Point show with your hosts, Carl and Aaron Swenlin. For those of you joining us for the first time today, welcome to our show. We hope to have you back next week as well. All right, well, let's get this started. Um, Dad, how are you doing? Uh, I don't hear you. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> yes, I'm it's doing, time for the show. <laughs> I'm doing fine except for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's certainly been an interesting day in the market. We are recording this Wednesday afternoon. So we'll be looking at uh, our, our vision of what might be happening uh, Thursday, but we'll give you kind of our, our insight for what our indicators are saying today. So let's go ahead and look at this agenda. We're going to do First of all, I've got these all in the wrong order. We're going to do an index review first, then we're going to talk about market bias. And, and we've talked about bull and bear market rules. This is sort of an extension of that. So uh, Carl will be explaining what we mean by market bias and the way that Decision Point views it using our indicators, which at that point we will go over. Uh, Carl's going to talk a little bit about technology the sector XLK, as well as our sector chart lists that are on decisionpoint.com. And then of course, I will finish with our DP Diamond of the Week. It is pulled from my Monday uh, DP Diamonds for this week. So hopefully we'll see what, uh, what it's doing and get some charts. I do want to let all of you know, especially our newcomers, that if you wanna try out our decisionpoint.com reports, with just a one week trial. You can go ahead and subscribe to our bundle package. That is the DP Alert and Diamonds. And then use the coupon code DP Trial. And as long as you cancel before the first week is out, you do not have to worry, we will not charge you. And if we happen to make a mistake and do that, you get in touch with me right away and we will fix it because we want everybody happy as subscribers to decisionpoint.com. All right, let's uh, take a peek at our decision point scoreboards. We did have one new signal this week, and that is the short-term PMO. So on the daily chart, the PMO for the NASDAQ 100 did cross above its signal line, and that is what gave us that buy signal there in the corner. Everything else is pretty much the same. One of the things I commented on in the DP alert, I believe it was on Monday, was the fact that we are seeing these uh, uh, really a divergence or a bifurcation, as Tom Bowley usually says, of the markets where technology, the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ 100 are certainly outperforming the other indexes. And at this point, it looks like the Dow really is the laggard here. We still haven't been able to get its 50-day EMA above the 200. So we're still on a long-term sell signal as far as the Dow is concerned. Aaron, did that, yes. uh, did that PMO, daily PMO, for the uh, NASDAQ 100. Did that survive today? It does appear it survived today. I didn't get a, I didn't get a um, email message on that. So I believe okay. it is still in, in force, but we will go ahead and I will be showing that chart so we can correct that if that is wrong. All right, the decision point scoreboards are certainly looking better than it has in a while. We do have all greens for our intermediate term trend <laughs> model. That means all of these sectors have had silver crosses where the 20 has moved above the 50 day EMA. So right now, so far, those are still intact. Uh, we still have a lot of 50 day EMAs below their 200 day EMAs, which is why we have these red cell signals. All right, but let's go look at some charts. And I'm going to show you first off, just really quick, this is the decisionpoint.com website. And if you haven't uh, checked us out yet, please do. And I do have a free email list and I will alert you to signal changes. I will alert you when we have a free article that has been published or one of my interviews that I do. Uh, I will also send that along with uh, an email to you if you're on our free email list. So you wanna definitely wanna go and check that out. But let's go ahead to the NASDAQ 100. And oh, very, very astute. It did not survive today, that PMO buy signal. I'll be updating this chart and talking a little bit more about this in the DP alert tonight. 
but certainly uh, interesting. We finally had gotten that signal and now we're whipsawing right back into a cell signal. So I will correct our scoreboards to reflect that. And uh, you can find our scoreboards on the Stock Charts website. We have a drop down here, the DP signals, just click more and you can pick us right there to have on your dashboard. And so I will be updating these and you can see you can get these for all four of these indexes. So, uh, so the, the NASDAQ 100 didn't survive. Let's go ahead though and look at what's going on in the uh, let's go here, uh, the S&P 500 chart. And actually, I think I'm gonna to start today with the intraday chart, because I think it's really interesting. I've been following it a lot more closely than I normally do, uh, just to really zero in on what's been going on uh, with the market, because we are, you know, you know, moving ourselves up and down, up and down in this consolidation zone. So I thought it would be interesting to look at the candlestick for the intraday chart. And one of the things I noticed, uh, you know, we'd already seen that decline starting at the end of yesterday, and that has continued with that gap down. And now we're forming a rising wedge that also happens to be a flag on this reverse flag formation. So we do have a buy signal. Again, this is a 10 minute bar chart. So we, we do see these signals come and go. What I would be concerned about right here is seeing that RSI, it's uh, in negative territory as we call it, uh, below that net neutral 50. And so seeing that not having recovered, even though we had a PMO showing some nice uh, momentum to the upside, I suspect we're gonna see that turn again tomorrow. But you know, who, who knows, we might be able to continue this into a rally to get back up into this consolidation zone. So let's go ahead and look at the five month chart. We'll just pull this out a little bit further. And Dab, feel free. All right. So one of the things on the, the, uh, the five month, uh, I'm, yes, the five month uh, bar chart here, daily bar chart, I've been watching this gap. Remember we had this reverse island right there, you can see um, that formed up here. And once we gap down to, trigger, if you will, that reverse island to make it official. Uh, we formed this big gap and clearly price has not been able to even get back up and test the low we had here at the bottom of that island, which I find interesting. You can see the PMO is now accelerating lower and we did get higher volume today. Uh, one of the things I, I talked about uh, yesterday and have been talking about, I probably am gonna write my Chart Watchers article on it this Friday as well, is how the VIX is telling us a story. And the way I look for the VIX to tell me a story is I look where it is on our inverted scale in relation to its moving average. We, we of course track when it, it punctures the Bollinger Bands, but one thing you'll notice is that when the VIX is below its moving average, that's when you're seeing the weakness overall in the market. And over here, you know, we stayed above that moving average almost the entire time after we've come off that March 23rd bear market low. And you know, it really followed track. We were in a nice rising trend, technically, we still are in that rising trend in the yep. intermediate term. <laughs> but we now are seeing the, the movement here under that moving average on the VIX uh, on that inverted scale. And that suggests internal weakness. And until I see that VIX really close and look uh, more healthy above its moving average, I think we are in a, a caution situation, tread lightly. And here is the daily real quick. And then I'm gonna pass it to you to talk about the market bias. Um, I've been pointing out that reverse divergence on the OBV, not a negative positive, it's a reverse. And that just simply means that we are getting all this increased volume, rising tops on the OBV, yet we're not seeing, um, we're not seeing breakouts here. We're seeing declining tops on price. So that's right. still, uh, all that volume is not sufficient to push the price up to new highs. Absolutely. All right. So let's talk market bias. Okay. And Carl did have an article. It's a free one that you published, I believe, yesterday on stockcharts.com in their blog article section. And it's free in our, uh, on our website as well. 
Exactly. Um, before I do that, there's something else since we've just been talking about the market. Mm -hmm. I wanted to show what happened with the technology sector today. Well, actually yesterday, we got a new high on the uh, XLK, new all-time high. And at that point, since it exceeded this high, I drew in a vertical line to start tracking uh, price versus the internals. And right away, we had negative divergences on uh, what, three in the indicators here. And this one was quite substantial. Uh, the number of stocks, percent of stocks above their 20 moving average. So this is something that, that was, that's an immediate warning when you see that. And doesn't, doesn't mean all the, the world's uh, going to crash, but it's just, it's certainly not as good a situation as, say, this last time when we marked that, all the indicators were uh, confirming the new high. So that was now, so we basically showing there was a shift in the internals. Not good. And this has been really one of the bright spots has been technology uh, making those new all-time highs, the NASDAQ 100. It seems to be, um, it has been nearly bulletproof coming out of that bear market low, which is interesting because we normally look at it as an aggressive sector, but clearly the interest is there. Uh, with the stay-at-home orders, although that is starting to uh, be released, but technology still seems to be doing pretty well, but uh, that's not a good sign. Yeah, and uh, something I saw on the business channel today was that uh, we have five stocks now on the SP 500, Amazon, Apple, Facebook, Microsoft, uh, Google, the usual suspects, and they, they constitute 22% of the market cap of the S&P 500. It's That's just, a lot. It's just too lopsided. But here we are talking about, I started talking about bias last, last week. And uh, I got to thinking about how we uh, needed something to express the degree of bias, at least something that could illustrate it, could uh, demonstrate it. Certainly a rising trend tells you there's a bias, but there's thing, things will go on within the internals that it's a little more uh, you know, subtle, shall we say. But right, like right through here, you can see, here's the range of the SPO. There, there's they're from plus 400 to minus 400. And uh, you can see how the bias on this mostly was up on the top side, you know, the top, side of the normal range. Um, and and uh, this gets a little more difficult to interpret in here. But anyway, I got to thinking what would be a good, you know, a better way to, to show this. And I came up with, uh, I think, instead of using lines on these indicators, let's use a histogram. And wow, to me, <laughs> this is like putting on glasses. <laughs> Right, uh, going from black and white to color. Right, right, and you know it's just so clear. You can see how uh, how the uh, ITBM ITBM are uh, very stable and spending their time one usually on one side of the um, zero line or the other. Um, but uh, but notice how. We, you can see the divert, negative divergences here showing up, positive divergences on this bottom. Uh, but notice now we've had quite a, an advance here, but it's been choppy internally compared to what you see over here. And it's just started, it started to smooth out and be a little more stable. And now it's gotten, it's starting to get a little choppy again. Don't know what's going to happen, but uh, I'd be more cautious at this point. Um, Clearly, <laughs> I know, I know that's what I'm doing. <laughs> it's trying to be more cautious with um, the investing. And sadly, I got stopped out of a position today. I was 
very unhappy about that because of the volatility today. It just uh, hung me out to dry, which happens to the best of us. Right. I had, I have adapted our short term charts to uh, this new format. Uh, I, I, I really like it. Now, it's amazing to me it took me 15, 20 years to figure this one out. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, uh, it's, not, it's not one that, uh, uh, Instagram is not one I was too keen about, but it sure does the trick here. Absolutely. I still would like to get a histogram on the PMO. <laughs> But we got uh, yeah. we gotta uh, bug somebody about that one. I've been bugging them for years. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Yeah, I know. Like, I, I'm I'm not too keen about it on that indicator. Mm -hmm. Same with the MACD. Yeah, I like to have them both. I think that it's uh, pretty pretty helpful. But <laughs> our yeah. PMO is very helpful, just as it is. Okay. Uh, you want to take a look at those short term uh, climactic indicators. Uh, we'll give our our um, viewers a little bit of a treat. This is one of the charts that we go over in the DP alert regularly. And when I was looking at this chart before the show, I noticed these very climactic negative readings on those net advances declines. And there's a histogram for you, really. <laughs> I think right. definitely. Yeah, net, a, net AD and net AD volume with definitely climactic readings. We were discussing this before the show and not really sure because we didn't have we don't really have a clear trend this 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 cluster here excuse me <laughs> right but uh yeah no, that's exactly so this right. may be an exhaustion climax which it could very well be uh it's the mark is just still got a bullish bias to it and uh or it could be an initiation climax but I, i'm not too I, I'm not as confident in that initiation, downside initiation, and mm -hmm. I'm too keen on that idea. Yeah, I, I'm kind of, I, if we had gotten a breakdown from that rising trend, I think I would have been more apt to call it a uh, initiation. Um, but this, it because it was such a volatile pull to the downside, I, I have to say with you, I'm I'm leaning a little bit more to uh, toward an exhaustion rather than an initiation, but we'll know for sure tomorrow if we open up and and lose that short-term decline, uh, rising trend. That I think the, that's really what we needed to see. Market found support on this uh, rising trend line, but I'm more. I would be looking more for a test of this line. This is really more important support than this. Yes. While, uh, we're, that, on this, hmm? while we're on this chart. Um, wanted to show this. This is how I mark quadruple witching volume. Just the it, th it doesn't stand out so much over in this yeah. that we had, but normally it stands out like this. And it, uh, you need to know that's the volume was caused by that day because it, it, it doesn't necessarily relate to anything else. The right. Volume. It's not like it's not necessarily a blow off. Right. And then, you know, like you were saying, it's not as obvious back there when we were in that decline. Uh, and, and when you get those big volume bars like we did back then, it actually is more meaningful. And uh, I think that's what you're, you're definitely showing. Okay, yeah. Absolutely. And volume was up a little bit here today. Um, it was above the, uh, we use a 250 day EMA for our volume just to really give us context as to when it's truly, um, you know, a big volume day per se. You know, when you're looking at a 20 day, um, you'll see a lot of up and down uh, above that average, um, that uh, moving average. So I think it looks great to have that, but uh, noticing that we did get, uh, we haven't seen that kind of uh, volume pop uh, since obviously options expiration. Yeah, stock charts, a default on volume is a 50 EMA. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so that, it'll, it'll be interesting. I'll have to put it together, uh, some information for that chart. Yeah, and one of the other things, you know, with the support levels, um, the 200-day 
uh, EMA is right in there. There's so many areas in there for, for price to hold between that, yeah. um, you know, horizontal support levels, two of them, short term and longer term. I mean, uh, and, and then the 50 day and even the 200 day. So if we do get a breakdown from that area, I certainly would be worried because that would mean that, you know, a lot of that support that really should be there isn't going to, you know, be there, but we still have to wait for that breakdown if, if we're going to get it. Right. All righty. Uh, let's see. Did you have any other ones? It looks uh, of interest. Actually, I I, my I, diamond. Oh yes, let's talk about uh, tourism and uh, cruises and maybe airlines even. <laughs> right. The uh, this is Royal Caribbean. Uh, I guess they're the largest, but they they were talking about the day on TV, so I put. It. Put it up so it, it dropped 85 percent from the high um now and, and then now uh from this low it rallied uh 285 percent wow now it's back down you know let's see that's a, a off 30 38 percent 39 percent and yeah you know, just a few days ago they were talking about how things were going to be looking up for these cruises. And I'm thinking, how in the world can you say that? It's just, you know, it's just in, insane. Counterintuitive. <laughs> all the, all the current bulls on the, on the TV, they don't, want, they don't want anybody on there with, that would uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. talk, talk the market down. They don't want that. <laughs> well, maybe that's why I haven't been on TV yet. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> I'll need to change my stance a little bit. Uh, I don't get, think you get on be Charles Payne's show. <laughs> right. But yes, the, you know what I've felt uh, as far as the airlines and the cruise lines and even oil for a little while there is really speculative. You know, I think people are just taking advantage of, you know, beat down prices and, and regardless really of the internals of a company. Uh, you know, it just seems like, well, this is a great opportunity. It's really beat down. I'm just going to get in and, you know, take a chance here. And yeah, I mean, that was a great rally, but now we, we had that huge decline. Could be interesting though. I see support at the, the 50, $50 level. Just uh, of those five stocks I talked about, Google is still not, um, not making new highs. So right. who knows why? But, yeah, because, uh, uh, you know, they were considered a pretty good uh, stay at home, you know, online um, schooling and that sort of thing. Uh, it, you know, the expectation was a little bit higher. Notice we have a, a negative, I'm not sorry, a reverse divergence on OBV for Google. It's OBV's making new highs for its prices. And so... Um, not a good sign. No. Uh, just something to be aware of. Yep. How about Microsoft? You've got that in there. I do. This is one in May I pointed out uh, the double top was forming. looked a lot like this Google double top, but that went away. But, yeah, uh, software has been a pretty... Uh, as you can see, making new highs there. It, it's been a pretty solid area of the market. We still have that PMO buy signal on Microsoft, but 2% uh, pullback. And of course there's Apple, which that was another double top I was looking at and it blew that out. So uh, yep. the, here, that one has a negative divergence on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think you better take yes, it. Yes, I will take it and we will take a peek at my diamond of the week. And like I said earlier in the program, I presented this in my diamond report on Monday. Uh, and you can see where it was. This I usually put in a stop percentage area. I'm not saying necessarily that's where you should place your stop. It's just where I might place my stop. Uh, I, I like to just see the percentages on the chart before I go in and put those uh, orders and stops in just so that I have a, a good feeling about um, 
you know, where I want it to be and where I don't want to be. And so in this case, we hadn't actually hit that stop level, but this is a really interesting, it, it has a flavor of the market in general a little bit here in that it came down today. It was a big 3% plus uh, decline in volatility, but it held its rising trend. And despite the PMO turning down, and I would expect that on a 3% <laughs> decline, uh, I don't know that it's necessarily um, irreparably damaged at this point. And the fact that price is still holding that rising trend is, is definitely positive. And of course, what I like is if I haven't gotten in to see these big pullbacks, because now I can lower my stop area and have you know a better chance at making that, uh, at making a profit, con considering where I was on Monday. So something to keep an eye out on Dexcom. Of course, they're a medical supply company and they are you know pretty big company look at this is the one thing that you have to watch are these stock charts technical ranks when you see a 99.9 this is basically the top you know 0.1 percent of of the uh, the large caps that's what it, it considers its universe and so seeing that kind of internal strength a lot of times you're going to be able to um you know, not, not get hit quite as hard, or at least you have that bullish bias as far as the internals go. So I'm a little concerned about that top below the, the signal line there for the PMO, but like I said, I'm gonna give it a little bit of free reign there because it was such a huge decline. We did hold that 20 day EMA overall and the rising trend. And then as far as the RSI goes, uh, you know, we're still in positive territory, which would be above 50. And yet we're not in that really overbought range. It, the RSI is really very helpful. If, if you look, when we get to these shaded areas of overbought, uh, we can certainly see a persistent run of these overbought readings. But typically when they start to fall out of bed on that RSI and it gets back down, that's usually when you start seeing these declines. So there was another time we were overbought and then you can see another time right before. So right now we are starting to head back down on that RSI before even getting overbought. So I think that it's giving us uh, some pretty good um, you know, opportunity here. All right, we have a little bit of time after that diamond of the week. So I thought we might look really quickly at gold miners. It's been kind of a, a favorite of mine as of late, so I wanted to let you know why. And then show you also some of the indicators that we have for it. But mainly I wanted to point out the fact we have this flag formation. We got the nice breakout for it on Monday. We have pulled back, and again, I love pullbacks. I think that gives us some great opportunity. So at this point, I have been looking a lot at the, the miners, and I might include some of those to, on uh, Thursday's Decision Point Diamonds report, but I think gold miners are looking pretty good. All right, that pretty much finishes us off. So I'm glad you all joined us. Have a great weekend and happy trading. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.